Here's a riddle for you. Who is more green? A vegan that drives an SUV or a meat eater that drives a hybrid? Uh, that's one question that's being hotly debated on several online green forums. So let's take a closer look at the debate. The main issue in question is the environmental impact of producing meat. Recently, former Beatles Sir Paul McCartney launched a new campaign which encourages the public to ignore their carnivorous cravings for one day a week. It's called Meat Free Mondays. The campaign says that cutting down your red meat intake is an important step in tackling climate change. To encourage people to not eat meat for one day in a week, Monday, when they've overdone it over the weekend, possibly. And the idea is that it's uh, very beneficial for the environment. Let's take a closer look at the numbers. Cows produce high levels of methane gas through belching. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, methane is a powerful greenhouse gas. It's actually 21 times more potent than carbon dioxide. A booming demand for beef means that a staggering 18% of all greenhouse gas emissions come from livestock, according to the U.N., while the entire transport sector, that's cars, trucks, airplanes combined, only makes up 13% of all greenhouse gas emissions. Now, another issue is the water, land, and food resources needed to raise livestock. So how much good does it do to cut meat out of your diet only once a week? A biologist for the environmental group Greenpeace says going meat-free one day a week would cut agricultural greenhouse gas emissions by 10 to 20%. And now, to answer our question, according to a study by the University of Chicago, a vegan driving an SUV is actually more green than a meat eater who drives a hybrid. According to their research based on a typical American diet and typical car usage, changes to your eating habits will have a bigger impact on the environment than the car you drive. But if going meat-free isn't appetizing to you, then PETA could have the answer. Last year, the group, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, announced a $1 million prize for the first person or organization to come up with a commercially viable process to create artificial meat. Now, test tube meat isn't a new idea. For years, scientists looked at ways to grow tissue cultures for mass consumption. So it's meat that doesn't produce emissions or use up land or other resources. But how close are we to growing meat in a test tube? I'm joined now by Jason Matheny, founder of New Harvest, a nonprofit research institute that supports research for artificial meat. Jason, this is flesh created in a lab. What is it going to taste like? Well, it, it should taste the same as conventional meat because it's made out of the same stuff. Uh, so if we look at the way that our chicken nuggets and our hamburger is produced now, we think we can match that, that same taste and texture by producing meat in culture in a way that's much safer, much more efficient, and much healthier for the consumer. But right now, we can only grow very small amounts. Uh, so producing it at a large scale uh, is still uh, quite a technical challenge. So it's meat that is produced efficiently. What are the other potential benefits? Uh, well, one of the main ones is the environmental benefit. So some work that we're doing right now at Oxford University suggests that we could reduce by more than 80% uh, the greenhouse gas emissions from meat production by producing meat in vitro in culture. Another great benefit is uh, the public health potential of cultured meat. So right now we suffer very high rates of cardiovascular disease due to the amount of animal fat that we take in from our meat. Uh, in cultured meat, you can precisely control the amount of fat. So you could have more of the healthy fats like omega-3 um, and less of the unhealthy fats. So we could have hamburgers that actually prevent heart attacks rather than cause them. But you know what, the yuck factor in all this is, is pretty high. So how do you convince people out there, including me, to give it a shot? Well, we think that the, the yuck factor should really be associated with conventional meat, because this is meat that's, in general, uh, typically unhealthy. Uh, we have half of our uh, chicken contaminated with salmonella or campylobacter, according to a recent consumer report study. Uh, we have uh, increased risk of E. coli. Uh, we have problems like swine flu and avian flu. The, the yuck factor should really be focused on conventional meat and the way it's produced right now, which is simply unhealthy, unsafe, and unsustainable.